Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Apostle Goodhart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's Word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's Word through His choice vessel, Apostle Goodhart O. Equeme. 2 Corinthians 5.10, Amplify Classic. Let's read together as a family. One, two, three, go. For we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil, considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved, been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplish him. Shout a big amen. Living in the light of eternity, part number two. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the honor to gather again under this open heavens. I beseech you once again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven. Place upon the lips and the tongues of clear of your servants on tonight that I will come to your people with nothing but a thus said the Lord. Move every man by your God from where we are tonight to where you reserve the place called destiny. We'll vow always to give you alone the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. You may please be seated in God's wonderful presence. Hallelujah. I trust that you were in church on Sunday morning just by way of a recap before we run along a bit more further than where we stopped on Sunday. Began by mentioning that the subject we are discussing in this season is an all-important subject. One of our 10 core values deals with eternity consciousness. Very closely related to the one of the core values the reverential fear of the Lord. They both go hand to hand, if you ask me. Because if you have a revelation of the reverential fear of the Lord, you will naturally live with a sense of eternity consciousness. And also, if you have a sense of eternity consciousness, you will naturally have developed, in one way or the other, a revelation of the reverential fear of the Lord. They go together. We began to see that in the light of eternity, many of the things we consider valuable, we esteem on this side of eternity really, really um, pales in insignificance to the things that really have value in eternity. We began to see that everything on this side of eternity is doomed to decay and to suffer corruption. Everything, everything. Human beings, things, houses, cars, plantation, everything, animals. Uh, By the virtue of just being on this side of eternity, naturally we are subject to a measure of corruption and a measure of decay. And we saw the beauty is for the child of God, he was born again, we have this advantage that we have the spirit of God within us, what the Bible calls the inward man, we're born again by the in cartable seed of God's word, by the virtue of that life within us, that life naturally sustains our outward being. So it says that though our outward man perish, what is perish? Suffer decay, suffer corruption. But the inward man, the spirit within you, is renewed day by day and by the virtue of the life, the zoe, the God kind of life that you carry within you, it can sustain your body to a reasonable extent. Ah, yeah. So the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, track with me, that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if he dwells, that word means to inhabit, to live, to reside in you, if he dwells in you, listen carefully, he will quicken, you may not see that there, he will quicken not your immortal body. Ayah, ayah. He will quicken what now? Your what? Now that word mortal is death doom. All right, is doomed to suffer decay and corruption. Uh, but the beauty is this: if oh yeah, the spirit that raised Christ resides in you, 
It has the ability to quicken what is doomed for death and corruption. It quickens it. Hello, somebody. Now, that is what I call a competitive advantage over anybody who is not born again and who doesn't have the spirit of God within him. Shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. But notwithstanding, as long as your mortal body can be quickened by the Holy Ghost, listen carefully, there is a limit and to an extent that quickening will go as long as you are in this physical body. What happens is the aging system can be delayed. It can be pushed back, but it's inevitable. Praise God. So all that are born, except by rapture, ultimately die. They may die at 100, strong and vibrant, or at 120, but ultimately they die. And the way to go, by the way, is to live out your full years here on the earth. Cross your leg like the patriarchs. Bless your children and your grandkids and tell them, today, I'm on my way home. Praise God. That's the way to go. And by God's grace, to the Lord tarry, that is the way every one of us will go in the name of the Lord. The Bible describes old age as far as your child of God. It calls it the good old age. Aya, aya. So old age is a dread and a drudgery for the unsaved and those that don't know Christ. Listen, but for believers, ain't nothing to fear. Praise God. You're going to age gracefully. Your amen sounds questionable. You want to age ungracefully? That means at 60, you will be jumping like a 30-year-old boy. That's the way to go. Come on, baby. At 80, you're, no walking stick. You're going to walk straight. Eyes clear. I mean, enjoying taste. Teeth complete. Hello, somebody. What a way to go. Praise God. If the same spirit, that race, not an imitation. I want to emphasize, not a duplicate copy, not a rank Xerox, not a look like Holy Ghost. My God, the very same that went to Sheol and raised Jesus, who had taken upon himself, not the sin of your village, but the sins of the entire world. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. But yet the Holy Ghost was able to raise him from the dead and we're told that that same, my God, yeah, resides in us he's doing something he's quickening our mortal body can you lay your hand upon your head and pray in the spirit decree and declare holy ghost quicken my body quicken my joints and my ligament quicken my mind i will not lose my memory i will not become senile no joint ligament receive an invigoration now by the holy ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Decay and corruption. Inevitable. Acts upon everything. And everybody. On this side of eternity. We begin to see. The relevance. Of your attitudes. And your relationship. To material things. And how it relates to eternity consciousness. My God. You see, when you are born again, your spirit is recreated. Your spirit is eternal. Whether you are born again or not. Mm. Because your spirit is indestructible. All right. Your spirit will either end you up in hell, God forbid, or end you up in heaven. But the truth is, your spirit will not, as it were, die. It's eternal. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's eternal. Yeah. Your choices, your decisions, will ultimately decide or determine where your spirit ultimately will end. It is God's desire. That every human being will receive the eternal life that he paid for. It says, the Lord is of long suffering, not willing that any man will perish, but that all possibly will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it's not some old man on a chair uh, with a long stick negotiating for you to fall, to make a mistake and wallop you. No, 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 no. If anything, he's negotiating for you to choose life. 
So I, I lay before you, Deuteronomy 30, 19, uh, life and death, good and evil. I will you choose life that you live. So he said, hey, you have a choice, but it's my desire that you desire me. Do you know what I'm saying? So I desire desire me, but I can't compel you to desire me. Why? I created you as a free moral agent with free volition. What, one of the things that brings you and I to what we call the God class with a small g is the choice and the free will he gave us to choose life, to choose death. You know, the choice you make, he ascends to it. Praise the Lord. So we see our relationship and our attitude to material things determines to what degree we are in eternity consciousness. Remember that, just to recap it. Right in Matthew 6, um, the words of Jesus Christ, how he said, hey, uh, if I take care, I'm paraphrasing now, if I look after the birds, the lilies, the plants, and all of that, how much more will I take care of you? He said, these things ought not to be a concern in your mind. He said, these thoughts occupy the thoughts of the Gentiles, those who don't know Jesus, not born again. He said, it ought not to be your concern. You ought to trust me. You ought to believe me and I will take care of you. If the dog next door had nobody to look after him, but just walking the street, it's called a straight dog. If you're alive for five years, 10 years, I mean, who fed that dog? Just the mercy of the Lord. He said, how much me, uh, your father, that I'm committed to you if you can trust me. Praise God. Matthew 6, 33, one of our four anchor pilot texts as a commission, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So the things the Gentiles are chasing are designed to be additions, additions. And so they will be for us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But what I want to reemphasize is this. Jesus gave us a very, very important statement he made in Matthew 6, I believe, verse 20. It says, store, this NLT now, store your treasures in heaven where moths and the rust cannot destroy. I said to you, everything on this side of eternity is death doomed to suffer decay, corruption. But it says, there's something we can do. Oh, oh. We can take things that are death doomed, that are corrupt, and translate them, oh my God, into heavenly treasures. Aye. That I can take the things that are death doomed, I can translate them to go into eternity as treasures waiting for me. Hear this. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and dust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. And it's true vice versa. Where your heart is, listen carefully, your treasure will flow. So how I can tell what really is doing you in Nigerian balance is by looking at your check account, checkbook or your check account. And I see where your outflow is going. Your inflow is your salary. Your inflow is gift from people. So let's look at your outflow. Uh, where is tithe? Where is offering? Where is kingdom investment? Where is gift to the poor? Where is money to, to, to feed, to clothe people? That, now, these are things we can tell. Where your outflow is will tell us. You, you don't have to say, oh man of God, I love you Lord. No, no, no. We can tell how much you love it by a book. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the, the text we began with, let me remind you again, because as I read it again today, it, it, it really gripped me hard. It says this, for we must all, so everybody was up here, all appear and be revealed, hear this, as we are, not as we are acting to be, not as we are pretending to be, not as we are forming to be. No, 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 no. It says, we must all appear, all right, and be revealed. He said, it was Jesus, it says, whatever is said in the valley or in secret, shout on the mountaintop, all right. So the things done in secret will be revealed publicly. He said, it will be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. So that each one may receive, look at Amplified, his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So really, really, what we see here is that we are working. You are working. You sleep, you wake up, you are working. And there is, <laughs> there is salary at the end of our work. All right? It will either be good or evil, but they say pay. Right? 
But the point is, um, we may act before people, we can act before God. And the beauty of, of the word of God and the beauty of the Holy Spirit, listen carefully, I hope you're really listening. Praise God. This, I believe, by, by the mercy of the Lord, is designed to do uh, a great amount of spiritual surgery in our hearts. You know, there's a kind of word that you are exposed to, and then it, it, it gets to you like, like a detoxicant. It's like a cleanser. <laughs> you can't tell what it's doing to you, but you just realize after a day or two, you don't feel like doing what you used to feel like doing. I, I mean, you're not, so, so you're not struggling with certain desires anymore. You can't tell where it left you. Why? The word washed us. The word cleansed us. He says, how shall a man cleanse himself or a young man walk in purity? He says, by taking onto the word of God and by that word cleanse himself. And I believe what God is doing in this season is a cleansing. And as you've heard me say over and over, there must be a clean up before there is a pick up. Oh boy, please listen. Please listen. There is a clean up before there's a pick up. Hello, somebody. So God, by his mercy, by his word, by his spirit, by the blood, is cleaning up. Because there's coming a pick up. There's coming revival. There's coming glory. Hello. But if the saints are not ready for glory, glory will come and become destructive to the people of God. So he said to Moses, said to Jerusalem Israel, hey, on the third day I'm coming. You take three days, let them clean their act, wash their clothes, stay away from their wives. Old Testament, for on the third day I'm going to visit them upon Mount Sinai. What was it? God always gives the opportunity to prepare for his coming. Hello, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Give me three fire baptized hallelujahs. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So the question I ask is where have I and where have you been storing your treasures? Here or there? We saw the words or the statement made by Job in Job 121. NLT again. I, I come or I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so Job was emphatic that we cannot take anything out of this life because we did not bring anything into this life. Is that alright? You can't take a pin, a house, a car. No. But go back to the statement of Jesus. He said, you have a spiritual technology aya, aya, to either store your treasures in heaven or store your treasures here on the earth. Yet, Job said, I came naked. I'm going away naked. But, but do you know that though you go away naked, Listen, if you live properly and right, right, um, you're not quite going to go into heaven naked as such if you've stored treasures there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. Please ask the Lord to help you. Understand? Let me rewind. Ah. As much as everybody will ultimately die and the believers will enter heaven, please listen. It's not everybody that enters heaven the same way. Is that, what I'm, is that making sense? Yeah. Based on how we live here, our values, our love for the Lord, our commitment, our service, our involvement. You see, all of that is preparing you for how you will enter heaven. <laughs> yeah. And many people are living their lives with a sense of carelessness. Say, well, anyhow, shall make with shah, shah, enter shah, shah, shah. <laughs> that's a risky because anybody who is trying to just barely enter may not enter do you hear me do you hear me if you aim for the low you're going to fall low if you aim high you probably drop a bit so apostle Paul oh boy by the spirit in 1 Corinthians 3 
begins to teach us and tell us that every man's works will ultimately be tried and tested by fire. Right? And if your works survive the fire, you receive the reward. Begins to give a categorization of the, of, of the value of our works. Gold, silver, wood, hair, stubble, all of that stuff. Likewise, he did in Timothy. Yeah. And he says also that even we will be tested by fire and will be saved by fire. Oh, yeah. So the point is, it's not just about making it to heaven, as we have oftentimes said. It's important to make heaven. Yeah. The question is, how do you want to enter there? Do you want to enter celebrated? Do you want to enter with laurels and trophies and, and, and crowns because of your sacrifice, your commitment, your love, how you lived on this side of eternity? How do you want to enter? It's important. So the point I'm making is this. Though we're going to go away naked, we will not necessarily enter heaven empty-handed if we labor here. Am I, am I helping you? Praise God. So therefore, we can't afford to live carelessly. It's not enough just to be born again. We have to know that we are working. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are working. The question is, what are you working for? Are you working for natural trophies or treasures? Or you're working for eternal treasures? Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, comparing our journey as believers to a man who is running for trophies, natural trophies. Hallelujah. Three of my sons love athletics. Two very good football players. And I watched the level of involvement and discipline they engage in playing that sport. Rigorous training. Rigorous to the body. Why? They are training for a trophy. I don't do that kind of stuff. I barely get to play long tennis to stay fit. You know what I'm saying? But, but they're working so hard on their game. So therefore... Uh, the level of display and dexterity is not like my own. But Paul was saying, a man who is going for the Olympics, I'm paraphrasing now, will work so hard for the Olympics, do so much, says if he does that just for a gold medallion at the Olympics, come on guys, ladies, how much more should we work for eternal trophies? So he says, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he surmises that I bring my body under subjection. Ayah. Let's have him proclaim the gospel. I'll become unqualified. I'll be a castaway. So you'll not be one that shows others the way and not see the way. Shout amen. amen. Praise God. So saints, we must become more conscious of eternity. It beckons. It's unavoidable. It's inevitable. It's knocking on your door. Time is given to prepare for eternity. You see, in the light of eternity, nothing here really should be your fancy. To be a president, how long can you be the president of a nation? Okay, the queen was there for 70 years, but she died. 70 years, a long time. I'm not 70, you're not 70 yet, most of us here, but she's gone. So the point is, everything on this side of eternity is like a drop of water in the blue ocean compared to where we're going to. Hallelujah to Jesus. Are you changing your mind now? Praise God. So, so, so you, you, how you think, how you walk, what, what does you? This will make you become more compassionate, make you forgive easily, make you not carry things too much. For, you say, no, it's, it's, it's nothing compared to eternity. Praise God, somebody. This changes how we live. Hallelujah. Look at what Paul said to his son Timothy in, in, in 1 Timothy 6. 6.6 6, NLT 2.8. Yet true godliness with contentment, I love this, is itself, what's that? Logic, online, on site, what's that? Great wealth. I thought great wealth was diamonds. The oil well. I thought it was what now? What? Degrees, pedigree, fame, popularity, great wealth. That was what I once thought great wealth was. To be known, to be popular, to be a rocket star, to be a, a superstar, to be known everywhere. I thought that was great wealth. But here I see something from the Bible. That great wealth is godliness combined with contentment. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. You know, 
the gentleman who was here on Sunday, um, Reverend Mando, um, <laughs> he is a very interesting man. But let me try to abridge his testimony. Wealthy man. But his job is a panel beater. Panel beater. Very humble background. But through hard work um, and doing what he knows to do best, God has blessed him. People take their cars from here to Boko to be repaired. That's how efficient his work is. Excellent. Excellence will advertise itself anywhere in the world. Praise God. Reverend Mando. Now, let me just bring this testimony. Couple long story short, there's a time Bunky of, of blessed memory was to go to Boko and it happened there was nowhere fit for him to stay. And they said, look, they'll call up the crusade. He's not coming again. He won't be in a hotel. You know, and some rich politician who has a good house in Boko opened his doors for Reverend Bunky. And that was where he was hosted. And Mando said, wait a minute. So we could have lost the opportunity of gracing this great man of God in our community because there was nowhere fit to accommodate such a man of worth or value before the Lord. So he said, he's going to buy a parcel of land, build himself a little corner in the house, in the compound, and build multiple guest houses for only ministers of the gospel. So whenever they pass through Boko, he opens his entire quarters to look after ministers, feed them literally, house them. That's what he's been doing for many, many years. That's Mando's testimony. Now saints, I don't know how I got here, but I think I'm getting somewhere. What he's doing, though when he will die, he will die naked. But for what he's doing and touching lives, he's not going to go to heaven empty handed. I, Mokobara Bagaba. He that gives a glass of water to one of God's own. Huh? So, like the widow who knew that this man of God who has been passing through here says he's a noble man of God. He's not like one of those tricksters. He said to the husband, hey, daddy, we have to do something wise. Though. We can't let this guy pass through anyhow. Let's build a house for him. Uh, so that whenever he's passing through our coast, he has somewhere to lay his head, a table, a chair, and a bed. Hey, you know, and by opening that door, the woman's life changed. What was lacking in her life came to be. Had no child, had a child. The point I'm making is this. Saints, we are to be conscious that we are working. That's what I'm saying. When you're in, in, in prayer, we're working. When you're giving, you're working. When you're evangelizing, you're working. We'll, we'll be in the market tomorrow. It's not because we don't have what to do. We're going to where? What market now? Otako market. As one of the many will be. It's not that we're careless. We are working. There are souls coming to our credit. You gave money. You prayed. I preached. They will sing. They will play. We are all working. But you must be conscious and be deliberate how you are transferring natural treasure. Where? To heaven. We have to take advantage of this spiritual technology. Hi. Are you here? Ah, how much can you eat? How much can you wear? How much can you drive? Be conscious of eternity and how you blaze into eternity with joy. May it be when our days are ripe and set and done and our days are over and we cross into eternity. May we hear the voice of Abba Father say to us, Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy. You see, you can be good and not faithful. Hey, hey, ah. I'm preaching myself happy. You're born again. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't fornicate. But you don't give. You don't pray. You don't love others. Uh, you're just born again. Born again. Born again. Nothing can be said about you. Like, people struggle to know whether you're born again. Or that you say you're born again. Praise God. But you're born again on your fire. You hear about a project. We're going to missions in uh, whatever. Kota Ngora. You're out to go. You can't go. You send. You're committed to pushing the sound or rather on the radio stations. Hey, guess what? You are working, oh. There's a reward, oh. Eternity beckons consciousness of eternity. <laughs> it was said of Abraham. Hmm? 
in Hebrews 11, he sought for a city whose builder hey, and the maker was God. He recognized himself, guess what, as a stranger and a pilgrim. Where? Here on the earth. Hmm. If we don't consciously develop the mentality that we're only passing by time, hey, we'll end up spending time, but not investing time. Tonda Kappa. I'm preaching myself real happy. Hmm? If we're not conscious that this world is not our home, that we are number one, strangers. Number two, pilgrims. Huh? And we're, we're, we're conscious that we're going somewhere and we must be preparing for where we're going to. We could, God forbid, waste our time. I said to you, it's possible to be a good servant, but not a faithful servant. We want to pray tonight. Say, Lord, grant me the grace to be faithful over the many blessings you've blessed me with. The blessing of time, the blessing of treasure, the blessing of talents. Blessings. Do you know how many people that could be in house of Judah in this church? But they look at the responsibility. Rehearsal on Tuesday, Saturday. Mm, mm, no, 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 no. I can sing. I sang in my last cry, but I want to chill here. Well, keep on chilling. Some people are investing your catabolaba. You think it's easy? Yeah, they are not. Whoa, H O J. Man, have them pray hours. They rehearse. They study. Then they stand to bless you. That's work. Do you know a bunch of guys in this church called sanctuary ambassadors? Whilst you're here clapping and jumping, they're cleaning your poo-poo. Just to be wrong, crude. Poo-poo. They're those guys who are MDCOs of companies. So, they're not cleaning our poo-poo because they have no job. No. They are investing. Because they know in Matthew 25, Jesus said, you, <laughs> when I came to you, you did not clothe me. I came to you, you did not feed me. I came to you, or you came to me in prison, you didn't come. He said, when, how, where? He said, if you did not do it to one of my own, you did not do it. So they know, they're not cleaning the people of good hearts. They're cleaning the people. I won't say who. It's about Jesus. The ushers are ushering you because you're a child of God. The Roger security out there, they're doing their work. You know, times you're here shouting, jumping, receiving fire, falling down. They're there watching over your cars like robots. Guess what? They are investing. <laughs> you can be good, though, but add faithfulness to your goodness. Eternity beckons. And it's not a very popular message. You know why? The devil likes things and messages that keep you. Uh, not traumatized, but what's the word? I say, what I'm thinking, I help the Lord. Brrr, transfixiated to time. So you're fossilated, a fossil. You're held in time. Bah. You know what? Because if you're held in time, you can't think of tomorrow. You're not thinking of eternity. So therefore, your, your choices and your decisions, they're not well thought. Hiya. <laughs> Joseph. Jojo, Jojo was in touch with the first lady of Egypt. You know what it means for you to, to for the first lady to make pass at you? You know, young boy, and the you know, first ladies are normally, you know, tip top 38, 20, you know, you know first lady. You know. So you see, this guy, he, he must have felt, man, he must have felt, man, I'm, I'm tripped that the first lady can even look at me, scrawny, seven slave boy. <laughs> This is a promotion, man. <laughs> this is elevation. Divine. My sister. You. That's my sister. Divine favor. You don't quote, it is favor. It's open door. The Lord opened it up. I saw first and said, I can come take chop, 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 chop. But you know what he said? He said, how can I commit this great sin against God? It wasn't just the boss. Not the wife of the boss. God. Hiya, hiya. But you see, because oftentimes people
fail to look at the eternal consequence of our one night stand, our action. We think, okay, it's a, it's a two, it, that Indomie noodles for two minutes can cost you your destiny and your mantle. I spoke in parables, oh man of God. <laughs> two minutes. Then you go, what happened? You lost something valuable. You needed mercy to find it again. Something labored for years of prayer and fasting, and then two minutes, one little girl. No, you gotta think of eternity. So I, I'll not take church money. I'll take church money and I'll and I'll feel how you, you know what God is helping me to point to the church? Then how 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 why why how? Then I'll buy how, I'll buy car, I'll buy shoe, I'll be wearing how. But no, no. So eternity consciousness is key to living a fulfilling life in time, but also secures you for what? Eternity. Please listen. You may not hear this every day on the radio, on TV. Hallelujah. Time has gone so fast, man. Glory to God. All right, let's look at that first Timothy again. Oh, I had hoped to have gone far, but God is blessing us. All right, First Timothy six six. We want to drive this thought, and then we'll rise to prayer. Yet, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Oh boy, great wealth! How wealthy are you in the eyes of the Lord? How wealthy are you? Question. I'm not saying your bank account. It may not be as relevant before the Lord and before eternity. How worth it? Your, your wealth is not as much as measured in what you have as much as what you've given. What you've done with what you have. Life you've taught with what you have. So it's real well. After all, he says, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world and we cannot or can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Look at verse 9. Please pay attention. Pay attention. So that you, you, you question yourself um, how quickly you still want to be rich after you read this. And why you want to be rich. <laughs> that reminds me of a, of a young boy that came to me on Sunday. <laughs> Very young boy. I won't call his name. You know who he is. He came and said, ah, Pastor, you want to pray for me? I think his birthday was the next day. I said, I said, what do you want me to pray for you for? He said, that my father and mother will be rich. I said, huh, you already know money at your age. I didn't tell him that. I said, really? My son, so what will they do? Then he mentioned a few things. He said, okay, will they pay for people's bills? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, 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 the purpose for the riches it needs to be ingrained in him. Don't just pray for your parents to be rich because Riches without purpose or money without mission is trouble for you. So I tried to itemize a few things. Okay, took up the blue, da 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 da. da. Said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and I prayed for him and his father. So, so it's one thing to want to be rich. The question to be asked is why? And before you answer me religiously, to be a blessing to Rogic, to form many winning todays and many, many, stop there. What have you done with what you have now? Kuseba, stop it. Don't go far. The small, you say small. What have you done? Which radio have you paid for? For one naira every week, every month. I used to wear a papa, wear a papa, wear papa, papa. So papa, papa, papa. What have you done now? When the Lord bless me, I'll buy you car. No, what have you done now? Recharge card. Hmm. Praise the Lord. When it comes, I will build this church one day. Have you started now? What amount do you have in the building fund at this level? So the point is, money without mission is dangerous. Hear this. Ay, ay, ay. But people who long to be rich, they long to be rich, fall into temptation and are trapped. I didn't write it too. And they are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money 
have wandered from the true faith. So there's a true faith, there's a false faith. They may be in faith, though. Ah. <laughs> they may be in faith. They're drawn to certain TV programs. They're in faith. They're in church. But the question is, are they in touch with the true faith? Hmm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Beloved, let me say this to you loud and clear. In the calendar of God, listen carefully, the majority is not always right. You have to write this down. Though. You're looking at me like, you know. To be popular does not mean you're right. To be famous does not mean you're right. If you open the broad gate, people come there to rush. So there's a straight way. It's a straight gate and a narrow way. There be few there at. He said, there be few that find it. So that way must be found. You must look for it. Matthew 7, 7, ask, you receive. Seek, you find. So the result of seeking is finding. So for you to find the straight gate, you must be looking for it. Something must tell you, you are tired of the general thing you're seeing around. This thing I'm seeing everywhere like this. It doesn't seem, something is not adding up. It's popular, but not adding up. Something is not doing my soul that is right. Then you begin to seek and inquire and pray. Oh Lord, show me, show me. He will show you. But the way is narrow. And there are few there at. And there are likely few you find along that way. <laughs> you know, what I mean, people who have this heart for God in these last days, and it is what is called a kindred spirit. Something connects. Like when Mary came, or Elizabeth, Mary came to the house of Elizabeth, and the baby jumped the womb, there was a connection. So when you meet people who are singing this song, Revival, they want more, they're seeking for the glory of the Lord. Something connects, it's as though you've known them for so long. Am I correct? Oh, yeah, it's called a kindred spirit. We know ourselves. There are 7,000. The Lord said to Elijah, who have not bowed down to Berlin. So look for your kindred all over the world. Some are in Catholic Church, Anglican Church, Methodist Church. It's not about church. It's about the spirit, the DNA. It's not, it's not in the Pentecost. No, no, no. It, you just know. This, this, you're a seed. You're looking for something. And you, you fellowship with them. It's as though you've known them forever. I met a gentleman in Makodi. It's as though you forever. We're just flowing. We met just once, but we're just like we've known for 10 years. Kill the spirit. Something doing me is doing him. Something doing is doing me. We relate with it. Rise on your feet. Can you ask the Lord for help tonight? To become more eternity conscious. One prayer. Just help. To become more eternity conscious. Pray that prayer one point and ask for grace. Oh wait, I need grace. Too. Oh no, 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 no. We need grace. We need grace. They say clean up before we pick up. Can you ask the Lord for grace not to be left behind? I want to hear a praying people. Hallelujah. 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 Please cry out to God for one minute before we engage the blood for help. Ah, he's a present help in the time of need. Who's in need? I'm in need. Cry out in desperation. Are there any areas of your life that needs intervention? Ask him for help. Ah, so we'll appear before him as we are, not as we are acting. There you are. Let your light shine. Show me what needs to be adjusted tonight. Let me think myself higher than I am. Oh boy. Are we praying on what? Two minutes? Let's cry out. We're about to engage the blood. Can we pray for this entire church? For the eldership, the leadership, the workforce, the membership. That none shall be found wanting in this journey. Oh, the Bible said, lay aside every weight. And the sin that doth so easily be said. Aya. Baba, I cry out, help me. Not to show the way I missed the way. Mercy. To be on track, on task. Lekoba. Never to turn to the left or the right. Oh, I refuse corruption. I refuse dilution and pollution. Oh Lord, help me to stay true to this sound. Fearless, bold, courageous. Ikapalaba all my days. Till my days on the earth are over. Rabbage. Ilabalabo. No compromise. Somebody pray. I, 
Molete, Amalata, Amalata. Let's ask for grace to finish well. We will be good and also faithful servants. I will be good. I receive grace to be faithful. In my giving, in my fellowship, in my word study, grace, faithfulness. My prayer, grace for faithfulness. Ah, 30 more seconds. Lydia Ranabos. Aya. Lydia Balos. Take advantage of this open heaven. It's a pool of Bethesda. Jump in it. Revival is here again. Receive grace. I will finish well. We will finish well. Will not be a byword and a proverb. None shall be a castaway by the mercy of our God. Aya. The straight and the narrow pathway. My God. There be few there are. May we be amongst the few there are. Rajik and Home Global. Online pray. You are part of this family. Apostolic house. Prophetic company. Pray in the nation. And lay aside the ways. Somebody pray. Plead the blood upon my life, upon the works of my hand, upon my endeavor. Oh Lord, let the blood speak. Keep me the straight and the narrow pathway. Teach me your reverential fear that I may depart from iniquity. Hey, Nuribili and Doloskaka, Nuribili and Doloskaka, Nuribili and Doloskaka. Teach us, oh God, your reverential fear. Maramanobo, teach our youth. Our children, our toddlers, your reverential fear that they may depart from iniquity. By the blood, 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 by the blood. Father Lord, you're the helper of the helpless. The hope of him that appears to be hopeless. Tonight, we beseech you for your help. Ah, we bring our lives under the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. In any way and every way, we might have turned to the left, to the right. Tonight, we receive grace to realign ourselves to this straight and the narrow pathway. We receive grace under this open heavens to lay aside every weight and that particular sin that doth so easily beset us. Help us, Lord, to lay them aside. We ask for grace, not only for continuity, but grace to finish well. None shall be a castaway. None shall be a byword and a proverb by your mercy and by your blood. As we eat this covenant meal, Lord, we receive strength. For the journey ahead is great. Thank you, our Father Lord. We ask your blessing upon these elements and emblems. We sanctify them, hallow them. As we eat with in faith. And eat with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Apostle Goodhart Obi Ekweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life. And we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.